Hello everyone and welcome to this new video which is the third video of the calendar interop series that I'm doing probably this will be the last video as well because in the previous two videos I've talked about what is calendar interop and what are the use cases and then I started to do the configuration with you after showing the prerequisites and the tools that you will need or the resources that you will need and also getting into the first part which is allowing calendar users to see or allowing Google calendar users to see the availability and the status of the Office 365 users. Now as mentioned I'm doing this with Office 365 but it is almost the same if you're having on-prem exchange server but again for sake of simplicity and ease of demonstration I'm just doing it with Office 365. Now if you haven't watched the other two videos I really recommend that you pause here and go back and watch both of them or at least the second one because that is the basis for what we're going to do in this video. Uh, so in this video I will complete what I started in the previous video and I will now work with calendar users and I will show you what you can do or what are the steps that you need to follow if you want to allow Google Calendar users to use and book exchange resources. This is a very straightforward process also you just need to follow the instructions that are laid out for you here and after reaching the step number seven you're going to be able to let users use exchange rooms and resources. So again, as you've seen in the previous video, the steps in here are very straightforward and well explained and described. So if you go to the first step, it will tell you that you will need to create some additional role accounts and it will give you the command for it. It will give you two commands, one if you're having on-prem exchange server, the other one if you're having an Office 365 subscription, which means exchange online then you just go through these steps and everything will be well explained um, even it's going to ask you to create a filter rule on office 365 to make sure only the users in your domain can use those resources and no one else who is not authorized will be blocked from using those resources so these are very nice and very good resources actually I always open them and work with them and I want to configure calendar interop to any customer or even if I want to troubleshoot anything I will just go back to these steps and review the actions that have been taken on the target environment to make sure nothing is missed and I remember in one case we did this and I, I got an issue I didn't really identify but I'm assuming or I suspect it was because the role accounts were created with a different password so we just had to delete those accounts and recreate them using the same password that we have used to create the the initial role account that we have created in the previous video so again that's a reason for you also to check out the previous video and make sure you didn't miss the information there so without a lot of talking let me get started with this so as mentioned, the goal of this is I want to allow my users to be able to see and book the exchange server rooms and resources when they go to their calendar and when they create a new event. So if I click on rooms, I want to be able to see the exchange server resources and rooms in here. And if you remember also in the first video, I showed you how the process and what, what's going to happen when I, when I complete the configuration and you will be able to see a section or a category called other where you will be able to select a room from it and that room will be coming from exchange server or office 365 exchange online so the first step for me here is to create additional role accounts on exchange whether that's exchange online or exchange on-prem and in my case i am using exchange online which is the office 365 and this is the command for it so all I have to do here is I will just take this command and paste it in the PowerShell and that's it. I'm done. So this is again one of the great features or one of the great stuff about this guide is they give you everything that you need so you don't have to look anywhere else even though these are Microsoft specific stuff but they provided the information for you to make it easy and fast for you to implement this. All I have to watch out for in this step is I have to use the same password that I have used for the role account. So I am actually going to apply this command offline because I have used a production password actually, unfortunately. <laughs> so I will apply that password and then I will move on to the next command, which is creating the accounts using the password. Okay, so I'm done with the first command. Now I will take the second one copy and then go back to the exchange powershell and paste it 
and then I will have the role accounts created for me and ready to be used. Okay, so I think there is something wrong with this. Okay, so it seems that the command is actually put into two lines. Let me just open Notepad and format it properly. So what I need to do is just to make sure this is done properly, all right. And also I need to replace the domain here with, with my domain, which is... So I guess I'm good. Let me select all of this and copy. Go back to PowerShell and paste here and hopefully everything will be fine for me. So the accounts will be created now. And if I want to validate, then I will go to the portal of Office 365 and I'll go to users and I'll see active users. There I should see the 10 accounts. Now it's asking me to add a license for it. And this is one of the points that I wanted to also mention and talk about. So in my testing setup, I only assigned a license for the first troll account. I didn't assign license for the remaining accounts. And this is something that actually I'm researching for and I am still validating how things will work there, whether you will need a license for it or not. So for the sake of this demonstration, I would recommend or I would say that you add a license for these accounts to make sure that everything is working well. If you want to experiment on those, then I would suggest you do it on a testing environment where you start without a license for all of these and then see how things will work for you. If they're working, then that's fine. But again, you have to watch out for the warning that is given to you, which is the account will be disabled after the grace period. So this is something that you need to watch out for uh, if you want to experiment with that. Otherwise, you can just select all of these and grant or add a license for them to make sure everything is going well. So you select all of those and I think there is an option to add licenses there, manage product licenses. And then I will add an existing product license for all of these users. So I'll just make this on and I will save. And that's it. So now the role accounts are ready. We are ready to move to the next step, which is making the resources and rooms available for users to see them and book them from the G Suite organization. Now for that, actually, I need to create few rooms because I deleted the previous ones. So I'll go to rooms and equipments in under resources. And I'll just create two rooms or three rooms. Let's say it's a room. Let's say room one. So this is the second room. And the, they are being created. So while they are being created, what we need to do here is we have to set the calendar processing for process external meeting messages to true. So basically we're telling the group or the resource to accept meeting requests that are coming from the outside. So in order to do that, again, we have two ways. We can either do it for one room if you want to test or we can do it for all of the rooms. Now, I only have two rooms. So if you just copy and paste this command or these two lines, it will be the same as if you're doing this. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to take the first one because I want to do it one by one and see what's going to happen. Let me just verify if that's done. Okay, second room is created. Now, let me start with the first room. So I'm pasting here and I'm just going to change the display name of the room, which is room one office 365. And it should be good for the first one. And again, it should be fine without any prompts or anything. So the next step is going to be about, we need to create a filter for our G Suite users to allow them or to prevent anyone else from using these rooms who is not member of our domain. So what we need to do here is we have to set up a mail flow rule with these conditions. So we basically, if the recipient is the mailbox of the room, it will block all of the messages that are coming except if the domain is our internal domain or, or our G Suite domain, which is in this case is the same domain that we're using in Office 365. So I'm going to go to the Exchange Admin Center in this case, which is found at the bottom 
change admin center and in here I will go to mail flow and create the mail flow rule that they want me to do this is something that needs to be done from GUI I think so I will go to mail flow and in mail flow we'll go to rules and then I will create a new rule so again just to see the conditions we are looking to have we are looking to have a recipient filter and we're going to block everything so let me rooms messages or whatever name that you want to do the recipient is you will have to wait for this to load okay so any anything either this or this the action will be blocking the message or rejecting the message or actually maybe deleting but let me just do it a rejection with notification and the explanation will be you are not allowed to send to this mailbox something generic I think everyone is using so we need to add exception which is except if the domain is the sender domain is our internal domain so this is the option for the domain and let me add my internal domain here yeah, that's it. So what's going to happen now is every email that is coming to these two groups, either one of these, it will be checked against this rule. And if the sender of that email is not the, uh, anything that is coming from this domain, then it will be rejected. And I will test it with you once you're done. So that's it. I will click save. I don't need to do anything else here. So it's still not going to work on this on Chrome. So let me try Edge. <laughs> Maybe they will like their browser. Okay, so they like their browser, it seems, <laughs> because it's being created using Microsoft Edge browser, so that's good. So once this is done, then we'll be able to move to the next step, which is creating the room distribution group. This is also something of the stuff that I encounter some issue with, maybe misconfiguration or some other issues where basically what you're creating here is a distribution group but the type of that distribution group is set to a room list and this is something that's not going to show in the distribution groups list whether on exchange online interface or in the office 365 resources and groups list as well so the only way to see this group is using the powershell and i will show you now exactly how to do that in in just a bit let me check that if I, okay so the rule is created and now we can apply this command so it's very simple and straightforward you will take all of the rooms that you want to include in the calendar interop and you want to allow google calendar users to book and put them in this distribution group so if you have one or two groups that's fine but if you want to apply it to all of the groups then this is the command so i will just do it in one shot so i'll copy we'll go back to powershell and then I will paste here and clicking the enter on the next one and that's it so what what happened is it's actually taking the two resources that I have created the two rooms and it placed them into this one so if I go or if I do get let me copy the name here if I do get distribution group and just put the name like that I should see the distribution group and if I do get distribution group member I should see the two rooms inside it which is what I want actually now just don't mind about this user mailbox it's it's something that it's not really looking what you see here but I don't know why it's showing as user mailbox while this is a room mailbox actually so just don't mind this the next step is going to be we're going now to interact with G Suite back again. So we finished the configuration on Office 365. It was four steps. Now we're going back to G Suite. So it's we're going to test if our configuration are fine or not. So for this, you'll have to go to Calendar Interop Tools. And this is going to open a testing page for us where we can test the configuration and the connectivity to Exchange or Office 365, you know, domain and configuration. So what we are going to do here is there are a few tests that you can do if you want but in my case I want to go to resource booking 
and I want to actually refresh the resource list or test the resources retrieval. So if I click refresh, I should be taken into another page where it's going to do tests and I should see the result. And if I see the two rooms that I have, then it meaning that everything is going well for me and I have done the configuration properly. So as you can see, I can get the room one and room two in here. So everything is good. If I get an error, then I have to go back and revise my settings or I have to check out what is going on or what is going wrong in the configuration. So the first step in, in, in exchange or in G Suite, sorry, in G Suite testing is done. The next point is I have to enable the resource booking and then I have to verify the settings. So I have to go back to the admin console and I have to go back to calendar enter op. And in there, I have to enable the resource booking for my users. So going back to calendar interop and I will just check room booking and I will click save. So now I have enabled this and keep in mind that from this point, there might be some delays on the settings reflection or the settings propagation. So if you click enable and click save, and then if you go back to the testing and if you test, you might get errors because again, it's, it, it just needs some time to reflect and, and propagate the settings. And this is something I noticed from both ends, from G Suite and from Office 365. I have no idea how long, but there will be some random delay. And I'm saying random because sometimes you just do it and it works immediately. Sometimes you, you do it and you wait for about an hour. And after that, it will work. So hopefully in this case, it will be almost immediate and to test now we're basically we're done so all you have to do here is just test one more time to confirm and then we can go back to our calendar and then we can allow our users to or we can test if you can see the rooms or not so i will test the room the first room which is room one and i will click perform test hopefully i will get a success here and you see it's actually succeeding with the first account. Now, as long as one query succeeded, I think I'm fine because the other ones are maybe like something, some strange error that I'm seeing. But anyways, so our user now can refresh his calendar. And uh, let me add a meeting and let me check the rooms. So you see other is came and inside it, there is room one and room two. And that's it. So we are now able to book the rooms and we can test them and all of this. So this is the room that have been added. And let me add a title here, which is testing a new room. That's it. So I will click save. And that's all what we need to do in order to make our G Suite users use Exchange Online or Exchange On-Prem rooms and resources. So this is it really. Hopefully this was a useful resource and a quick guide or tutorial if you want to call it on calendar interop and how you can set it up with G Suite and a low interoperability and coexistence between G Suite calendars and Office 365 or Exchange calendars and how you can allow your users to use the Office 365 or Exchange calendars. So at the end, if this was a useful video for you, please like it and subscribe. And if you have any question or anything, or if you want even to discuss anything about this, please don't hesitate to put it in the comments section. Also, please check out my blog and my course on Udemy, which is about G Suite management and administration. If you would like to have a full comprehensive guide and a full training on how you can manage all of the aspects of G Suite and what are the controls and what are the policies and all of these things, then that course is for you. So if you check the link in the description, you'll be able to get it at a discounted price. Until the next video, hopefully that was informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing and thank you also for your time.